Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Pray. Let me give us four keys that control restoration very quickly. Thank you for your patience. Four keys that control restoration. Number one, anyone who is in need of restoration, you must do the following. Are you ready? The first key that controls restoration, I wrote here, is self-examination. The thing that happens to a man when you sit down and examine yourself. Unfortunately, many people are too busy blaming others and pointing fingers so they cannot experience restoration. We blame every other thing but ourselves. The word responsibility comes from the word responsive. The ability to factor in the cost dimensions of your decisions. Are we together? And in Africa, we are experts, unfortunately, at blaming people, whether justified or not. If you do not take the time to examine yourself, you will always end up in tragedy. In Luke chapter 15, from verse 17 to 20, Luke chapter 15 from verse 17 to 20. This was the prodigal son in his fallen state. The Bible says that he demanded that his portion of the father's inheritance be given to him. Then the Bible says he went and spent it on riotous living with his friends. Is that true? By the time we get to verse 17, the gentleman was now feeding with swine he had so declined and his life had been so degraded he was feeding with pigs but my bible says he came to himself i like that he never said the holy ghost spoke to him he never said god called him men can come to themselves you can come to yourself and say listen this pattern in this family where women feed the men i think it should change this pattern in this family where it looks like there's untimely death. There is something that happens to men when you stay with the spirit and examine yourself. So the young man tells himself, the Bible says he came to himself and he said, How many hired servants has my father? And then I am here feeding with the swine. Then he said, I will arise. This was his conclusion from self-examination. I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and at me as one of your slaves. And the Bible says he got up and put action to his decisions. And that began the process of his restoration. There are many people who are waiting on God. God is honestly waiting for you. A popular scripture in the Bible says, If my people which are called by my name you know that scripture shall humble themselves and pray it says and seek my face turning from their wicked ways it says then will i hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and heal their land there are many people who restoration is still very far from because they are still full of themselves they have not come to a point to understand that your being sacked from the job is not a tribalistic issue is that there is a pungency with your human relation skills and you are not an advantage to that job so they had to throw you away oh these people hate me because i'm from this and that and you seem to surround yourself with people who keep justifying your mediocrity we must get to points where we sit down and take responsibility. I must be doing something wrong for this business or this ministry or my family. Why do my children hate me? Five of them and none of them hate me. Not their stupid children, wasted generation. No, something may be wrong with your, your strategy of fatherhood. Are we together? Self-examination. Number two. The second key that controls restoration in addition to self-examination is brokenness brokenness please write it very quickly brokenness you find that in psalm 51 and verse 17 psalm 51 is a very profound psalm of mercy this was david crying unto god in repentance hallelujah remember when prophet nathan came and revealed to him what happened and he was crying unto God in a broken state. Here's what he had to say. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. He says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. Hallelujah. 
you may want to listen to my teaching on mercy if you can find it i teach here extensively that the value of mercy is that it is administered to a heart that is broken forgiveness is useless if there is no repentance the mercy of god is not for everyone as cheap and as free as the mercy of god is it is a waste to administer mercy to a heart that is not broken so many times god will leave you in your state until you come to an acknowledgement there is something powerful about the acknowledgement of your limitation when you take responsibility then the mercy of god will find value in your life so brokenness is very very important are you seeing that unlike speed you can just access wisdom just access favor and pray prayers but when it has to do with restoration you will need some time to yourself to reevaluate and to examine yourself hallelujah number three the third key that controls restoration is knowledge knowledge haven't cried out self-examination and brokenness are heart matters not mind matters they are matters of the heart this is you flogging it out with destiny to make sure that your heart is pure and are right but that is not enough there are things you will need to know that begin to sponsor restoration knowledge knowledge proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9 let's hurry up so we can find somewhere to pray proverbs 11 and verse 9 the bible says a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor it says but through knowledge shall the just be delivered not through sentiments through knowledge shall the just be delivered are we together what do i need to know that will now sustain my victory and sustain my results knowledge in isaiah chapter 60 we quoted it yesterday the bible says arise shine for thy light is come that means your rising is light dependent not time dependent light dependent just because you have been 10 years in that situation does not guarantee the arrival of a solution the bible says you arise and shine only when your light comes not even that your light is around it's always been there but the day it comes to you as a revelation that is the day you arise and you shine hallelujah now let me give us the fourth key so number one self-examination number two brokenness number three knowledge i like number four and this is what will lead us to the impartation this morning the fourth key according to scripture that controls restoration is engaging the prophetic the prophetic ministry is the fourth key that controls restoration isaiah 42 and verse 22 isaiah 42 and verse 22 never forget this scripture isaiah 42 and verse 22 let's read together ready one to read but this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all uh-huh and they are hid in prison houses it says they are for a prey and non deliverate they are for a spoil and none say it restore someone must be the one to advocate your restoration it says they are taken for a prey and they remain as a prey because the prophetic voice that must say restore has not yet come restore 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 in second kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7 you know that's the story for time's sake we may not read it just write for reference second Kings 6 1 to 7 the Bible talks about Elisha and the sons of the prophet who were in training he said that he told them where we meet with you is too straight or too small he says let us go beyond the Jordan and while they were trying to cut the wood to prepare a bigger place the Bible says for one of them who borrowed an axe head it fell into the river is that in your Bible and the man said alas master for it was borrowed 
two troubles one he borrowed it and now he had lost it and the bible says the prophet came to him and said where fell it and he pointed the direction and he took a stick and threw it there and the axe head against gravity it began to float up the prophetic is very powerful ladies and gentlemen every time i talk about the prophetic i am quick to observe sadly that i know that the prophetic needs a lot of work editing and cleaning up as far as nigeria and africa is concerned unfortunately there are many portraits of the prophetic that do not define the authentic prophetic ministry as captured in scripture but please do not make a mistake of throwing the baby and the bath water because the prophetic is a potent force for restoration every time men encountered tragedy in the bible whether it was with the shunammite woman or the widow in zarephath whether it was hunger in samaria or the axe head floating it took the prophetic ministry to bail men out hallelujah there was hunger and famine in samaria and it took one prophet to say by this time tomorrow the bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet who had lost her husband and was now in debt she ran to the prophet and said listen this is a situation that i'm in and he gave her a prophetic strategy and oil began to multiply and she sold it and lived off the rest let me tell you the truth i don't know if i've said it in this church but even jesus himself being the word incarnate could not excel in his destiny until he encountered three prophets in his life there were three prophets who helped jesus to rise prophet number one was simeon the prophet prophet number two was anna the prophetess prophet number three was john the baptist he had to encounter these three prophets to rise The prophetic is powerful it sustains the power to reprogram your spiritual climate that when you are plagued with losses and ills and woes and it looks like time is against you you tap into the prophetic ministry and let me tell you the prophetic works wonders when it is administered within the jurisdiction of scripture 10 years of tragedy can be solved in one moment of the prophetic it is true do you believe this yes, alas master it was borrowed by this time tomorrow lock the door and fill up your vessels madam give me a morsel of your bread and water and he said this is the last it is about to finish and he said no not when i am here it will not be spent your water will not be spent every time there is a famine in a land there are two people who never feel it one is the king the other is the prophet these two people are always exempted from the pain of famine and fortunately for us in the new testament we are both according to scripture the bible says in revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our god kings and priests no wonder job said in famine you shall laugh and understanding is someone listening now so why are we here gathered this morning number one to share from scripture that restoration alongside speed are the twofold strategies given by the wisdom of god to men to help them redeem time in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13 we are mandated to redeem the time because the days are the time because the days are evil we need to redeem the time how do you redeem the concept of redemption I think that should be verse 16 16 my apologies 5 16 yes redeeming the time because the days are evil you know what it means to redeem to redeem means to buy back using a price like a ransom a bad example but if a terrorist should capture someone and then they say to bring a ransom you are redeeming that person it says to redeem time in the name of Jesus we are going to be praying in a few minutes that we have and three things are going to happen here number one we are going to be praying 
connecting yesterday's teaching into today's teaching that the forces of speed and restoration must find expression in our lives and then we will now pray and ask that the gracious hand of God that empowers men and also brings restoration that it will rest upon our lives and grant us acceleration in life hallelujah I have an idea and I tell you with all humility what happens when you access the grace for speed when you access the grace for speed and restoration your life becomes a wonder first to you and then to every person that cares to pay attention there is no doubt that we have lost things there is no doubt that we have lost time there is no doubt that we have lost people there is no doubt that we may have lost out on various aspects of our destinies but hear me people of God God is a restorer and God gives speed I may be speaking to someone your ministry has gone down it looks like things you can remember yesteryears look the glory and the honor and now it looks like it's gone there was a statement used in the Bible called e cupboard e cupboard is the departure of the glory but that the glory of God can be restored upon the life of an individual the glory of God can be restored upon a ministry upon a territory hallelujah do you believe that so it says arise and shine for your light has come then it doesn't stop there and it says the glory of the Lord is risen upon you the word glory is the Hebrew word kabod the Greek is doxa it means the weightiness the essence that which makes a person or a thing valuable is called its glory hallelujah so the glory of a good phone is its efficiency the glory of a product is the factor within that product that makes it exceptional when the Bible says the glory of God comes upon you it means what makes God in a class of himself is what he smears upon you so that your life now becomes a sign and a wonder may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus that by this prayer we are challenging and warring against shame and reproach warring again all the things that take away beauty and color from lives and from destinies and hear me ladies and gentlemen per adventure you have been a victim of all kinds of things connected to ancestry because i did tell you that there is no ruling out the role that satan has to play in taking away the glory from the lives of men satan is a master at turning day to night satan is a master at bringing that statement he cupboard into the lives of people I once met someone who I used to know years ago and when I saw him not too long ago he was looking pale and sick and I said what what is wrong what is the situation and he said honestly one thing led to the other and this is what they've diagnosed that I had I said no the enemy has done this Jesus every time he saw what did not capture glory he said the enemy the Bible calls Satan a thief what is the assignment of a thief John 10 10 it says the thief cometh not that means there is no reason why he should come to your life until he finds what to steal to kill and to destroy I think I said it a few years ago in this church that the presence of Satan around you is a verification that there is a treasure within you if you see Satan coming close to your family it means he has seen something you may not be seeing Satan has no business coming around any place where there is no treasure and there is no value because Satan himself depends on the Word of God to act he wants to know what God is saying and who God is speaking to and that becomes his direction 
no wonder he seems to be insistent over your life in this season because God has used the man of God to speak great things concerning your life and you are not the only one who had that prophecy Satan had it too and he's now roaming around the corridors of your next level insisting the Bible says there was war in heaven when a woman was pregnant ready to give birth to a man child he said a dragon came and stood waiting that at the point of delivery she will eat up the child it is not unusual for Satan to come to attack you it's proof that you are carrying destiny there is something within you maybe your father could not carry it maybe your mother could not carry it those who went ahead of you tried and failed and now it is your turn to carry it and Satan is standing there can we pray some prayers this morning please rise up on your feet the day you become dissatisfied with the negative narratives of your life that is the day you will be ready for the next level for as long as you pamper and tolerate delay for as long as you pamper and tolerate mediocrity for as long as you pamper and tolerate stagnation you keep providing justifications for those cases someone open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit this is my season and this is my moment Hallelujah, you have won the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep praying, you have won it all for me. That could not hold you down. You are the reason, King. You're seated in majesty. You are the reason, King. Hallelujah. Have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Please open your mouth and begin to declare. In the name of Jesus, I contend for speed and for restoration. Pray for yourself. Pray for your business. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your parents. Pray for your children. Pray for your organization. Go ahead and pray. The Bible says for everyone that asketh, receive it. Someone is praying. Sabran teka parakatos ke fresh ke te bele ke te panda shada kata krata kata parakas kata brande ke te bele ke tos ka fresh haribas kato prondos ke te bele ke te fresh kata bakata fresh ke te bele ke tos embrata kata bakata fresh kata bakato sa fresh ke parakatos ke la parondas ka te fresh ke te bele ke tos ke te brande ke ta in the name of Jesus I decree and declare it is a new season the season of delay the seasons of stagnation in the name of Jesus we curse you by the God of heaven someone pray someone pray in the name of Jesus in 5 11 and 12 is a prayer that I want all of us to pray so I'll give you a moment to quickly drop your request and then return back to your seat hallelujah Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please drop it very quickly and then you return back. And for those who are connecting, following online, 
you can stand in faith with your request as we pray declaring over this the God of heaven himself will not leave you in shame hallelujah once you drop yours please clear the way for the others so that they will drop it very quickly and then you can return back to your seat Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this flame Ruakelohi <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read Nehemiah chapter 5, 11 and 12 together. I want you to read it with conviction, knowing that your declaration of faith will translate to your testimony. You are a Christian and you can see it. Let's read together. One, two, read. Restore, I pray you, to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses also a hundred part of the money and of the corn and of the wine and of the oil that ye exert of them then they said we will restore them and we will require nothing of them so we will do as thou sayest then i called for the priest and took an oath of them that they should do according to the promise you are going to make declarations everything you declare that the realm of the spirit the devil has to release everything open your mouth and begin to declare houses your spiritual fire relationships declare restore declare restore declare restore I declare restoration. I declare restoration. in the name of jesus is it all right if i request for the ushers to just pick the prayer requests bags and bring them there so let's just have one person anybody at all maybe the officials within the ministry anybody just carry the the the, the um, container with the prayer request someone please help the woman so that we we'll make it fast yes please bring it up here everyone just open your mouth and begin to pray that these egyptians i see today is someone praying i see them no more forever these egyptians i see today someone pray in the name of jesus shame and reproach your end has come by the power that is in the name of jesus My daily 
deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is begin to bring them out in the name of jesus the son of the living god i'll pray for you in front i'm going to release the grace for speech shortly but i'm seeing that there is there is a strong anointing that is coming on one gentleman is the call of god upon your life there is a there is a mighty call that is upon your life and god is going to raise you to be a mighty battle axe i don't know where that person is but i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus i declare may that fire rest upon you right now may that fire rest upon you right now please bring them up very quickly may that fire rest upon you right now thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was